lesson on Mark Falco. Uh, what are yeah. your struggles on this matchup and this player? In Actually, I know this player. This player is Jubby. I know Jubby is a pretty solid Falco. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I think some sometimes um recovery can be an issue. Recovery. All right. Um. Also, um, mixing up my options for dealing with the lasers, I think it's probably my biggest weakness. Like. I guess what I mean by that is that sometimes I tend to tunnel vision on only trying to power shield or only trying to do take laser option or like only trying to full hop over them or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I need to be able to mix that all, all of that up better, basically, I think. Okay. Uh, before I say any more, do I sound good to chat? Just out of curiosity. But I'm, I'm gonna not viewing yeah. the stream. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I feel I sound fine. You and I sound fine. All right. To answer your questions, so this is a matchup where at low level it feels like Falco is super oppressive, and that you can't do anything. Like it feels like he's manipulating you. But once you get at higher levels, I do believe Mart has the edge because uh, I think Mart does fine in neutral. What yeah. you you said it yourself that you just tunnel in your options a lot. And when you tunnel your options, then you just become more predictable. And I, what I think might help you is forming a like forming a game plan against this bird, where yeah. you need to know principles of what makes the bird weaker and what what makes Falco a character. Like, what's the most obvious answer of what makes Falco a functional character in melee? Um, well, his lasers and also his combo game. I think are like some of the things that stand out about him. Okay, yeah, his combo game is naturally strong, but like how he could even land a hit in the first place is just lasers. Right. Like the lasers are everything for Falco. If he hit, if he didn't have a gun, like if his gun did no hit stun, he would actually be such a bad character. Like he'd be like mid tier at best. Cause uh, yeah. otherwise, how how would he how would he deal with Mart's sword to begin with? Like right. he's not fast. Uh, his full hops, it's okay, but it's not the greatest. So, with I, that in I, mind, what, what are you gonna say? No, I, I was gonna say I do agree that like I think Marth wins this matchup, and I have been getting a lot more comfortable with it mm -hmm. uh, uh, as I have been improving. It's just things can definitely be better, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if necessarily Marth wins the matchup per se, but I do think he has the easier time, and he has like the better punish game, obviously. But uh, with that in mind, what makes Falco, ha I think a principle that you should internalize versus, versus Falco is that you should know that the more you limit his lasers, the stronger you are against him. You get that? The yeah. less you can make Falco laser, that, the, that more, the more you can oppress him with your sword and movement, and the more that you mm -hmm. just like have an edge against him overall. So I, say I if think, I... Um... Uh, wait, what were you saying? Yeah, so say say that you are going to threaten power shields or dash forward side B to like, because like his laser does have like more than, I think it's roughly around or more than 15 frames of laser startup. So Falco needs a startup to begin with. If you were to dash up side B or like power shield his lasers, he is suddenly way more afraid to, he's going to second guess his laser. And from that manipulation, now you could like just use your sword to like you know wall him out or or uh space with fair it's he becomes so much more limited if you limit his laser game yeah that's I my think... go-to game plan for this falco and that's how i i like use like the first couple lasers to sort of like stuff them out such as take laser jab or side b and then i play from there mm -hmm. makes sense i think recently like one thing i like found against Falco, I think, is that you kind of want to stay at a distance where, like, like it's like you want you want to be like close enough so that he doesn't feel safe shooting lasers recklessly, but also like not too far that he can just fire away whenever he wants. Yeah, exactly. You want to always like make him feel like he's afraid to laser, and you want him to make him regret it the few times he does. Like you could like. 
dash attack before his laser comes out. You could throw up in there. Uh, yeah. Very various options. Um, if you do like repeatedly do like the same take laser option, then like not only are you probably not stuffing out his laser, like you're not gonna make him second guess subsequently, and you make his laser game a lot stronger if you do the same things over and over. Right. Uh, as for recovery, I I. Can you be more specific on what you mean that you you struggle with recovery? Like, do you mean like up B sweet spot or double jump? I think sweet spot like sometimes can be kind of hard depending on the stage. And also, um, like when I'm fast falling, um, during recovery, it's also something that I need to I need to learn. I think because um. I, that's like one thing I'm definitely not good at when it comes to recovery. It's like mixing up fastball timings between like side Bs and a, after a double jump or before a double jump or things like that. Uh, so in response to that, you could probably you're more free to side B against Falco than Fox since Falco tends to not punish as hard, but you don't want to like always side B at like right in front of Falco. But uh, side B is typically pretty good. You want to work on what I'm guessing. What's happening is he probably down smashes your up B a lot. Am I am I right on that? Um, I don't know about in this vod specifically, but in general, it does happen. Although I do get the tech like reasonably often. Yeah, so, so you could first off, bad. you could first off wall tech bear. But also, secondly, you could do the pew pew recovery. Do you know what that is? Um, I'm not sure specifically what you're talking about. Uh, he made he made some videos about the pew pew university guide where, uh, with up B, you could go for the bottom leftmost side of the co corner to up B at that spot, and that's like the best smart sweet spot that you could do. It's called pew pew university up being towards the ledge i think and basically like this is the ledge right here and this mm -hmm. is like the box of your of like the window of which up b that you could go you could go to the top right angle these four right. thoughts and ideally you actually want you want this so then if you go for the bottom left corner you dodge down smash completely I see. Like, cause like this is Falco's yeah. down smash. Like, this is right. This no, is it makes box. sense. Uh, and if you recover at the lowest possible angle, you will dodge Spacey's down smash like that. But it takes a mm -hmm. lot of practice. So I recommend you. Look... I have been practicing on the Uncle Punch. Yeah. So in ad game. in addition to practicing wall tech, you should also practice that sweet spot as well. No, that's what I've been doing. Oh, you've been doing this. Like recently, I, not like for a long time, but I recently thought like, wait, this could also be used to just practice getting around like down smash or like sweet spotting up B. Yeah, yeah. So you want to practice this more often. Uh, I would have to see what you're getting hit by. Uh, so when it happens, I could point out things. So yeah, what I like doing is I like having the student point out what he needs clarifications with because I believe having proactive questions is really good for long-term improvement. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, th that's what the routine seems to have been before, so. All right, okay. well, you killed him, which is good. I think um, I, I'm, like, pretty confident in my edge guards in, yeah. in this matchup. Edge guards should be pretty okay. free. I think I was just late on that one. Oh, I also um forgot to s say this, but like I I've been doing the thing that you suggested me to do last time. Um, I want to say it has helped with my execution, but um, at the same time, I don't want to be caught by like any sort of confirmation bias or like if it's or if I need to like keep doing it more to see like more legit results because it's only been like a month and i'm not sure if that's enough to like draw any conclusions yet uh if it's been a month then i would probably think you could draw conclusions okay and keep in mind actually zane does that routine like almost every day he like solo practices all the time all right 
I guess it doesn't hurt to keep doing it. Yeah, it maybe, doesn't hurt to keep doing it. Like, you don't not have necessar- to. Hmm? Maybe not necessarily for, like, as long as I was doing it before, but, like, just keep it part of my routine yeah, in some yeah. form. Um, yeah, you want to keep solo practicing regardless. Uh, it's like, it doesn't hurt. And, you know, if the best mic player in the world does it consistently, maybe, who knows, might have as good as a value to you as well. Yeah. I mean, before my solo practice routine was more like doing things on 20XX slash Uncle Punch to like practice punish game and things like that, not as yeah. opposed to doing this on like a normal vanilla CPU. Yeah, so the reason why I suggested you to beat up normal CPUs is because your execution was uh, not consistent. And right. in order to even get to the punish game, you, you your execution has to be consistent in the first place. So I agree, punish game is very important to practice. But what I was hoping practicing against CPU would do for you is to increase your execution abilities. And execution is yeah. always like the first and foremost of like you know melee. Is that you have to actually do it in the first place. Then you can move on to other facets of the game. Yeah. So I hope. I mean, I hope well, it's it been mo- helping you. It was mostly like to help me be able to like ingrain like the execution play more help me play more intuitively right yeah yeah the purpose of the drill yeah like to help my instincts and all that yeah your muscle memory okay oh i think i had a question yeah that was i should have like grabbed there or something maybe i'm not sure because because the thing is like i know that like if you get like a weak hit dash attack or down tilt you should grab but like would i have gotten hit by that move regardless i guess not no not if you do a full dash back grab okay because i like i do like to go for a dash attack against falco because it goes underneath his lasers a lot of the time it just based that one really poorly i think i wouldn't encourage doing dash attack too much but uh it's useful in a pinch but don't don't use dash attack because of going under Falco lasers because they could do lower lasers in response, and I wouldn't suggest relying on that. I would re- I would use dash attack sometimes before his laser comes out. Like if he like tries to run away laser, then sometimes right. I would use dash attack for that. It's just um, that was one of the ways I like thought of for like sure, combating yeah. lasers. Sure, yeah. To use dash, it's it's why I like to use dash attack more against Falco than Fox. Yeah. At least. Yeah, you but in that scenario you could have done a full dash back pivot grab. Okay. Or just even react and pivot grab earlier. Right. Makes sense. Alright, you're caught in with the side platform. Okay, wasn't really sure what to do there. But. Uh, there I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, that he wasn't anywhere near close to the ledge, so that nair right. wasn't too great. What do you think you could have done instead? Maybe some sort of a ledge dash. Uh, I'm pretty sure that laser down smash still would have hit you. Or like wait on ledge a little more and then get up. You could do that. What I would have done here is I would have, right as I re ledge, I would have double jump fared. Okay. Because that double jump fair, since I have a lot of ledge invincibility, n- neither the lazy nor the down smash would hit me there. And actually, at your startup, you had some invincibility. It's just like, you know, when you let when you double jump Nair, you have less invincibility as Nair comes out, so. Ah. Uh, okay. Like, he that. hit, he, no, well, not, I'm, I'm writing this wrong. Uh, he hit you at the later part of your nair, like because like you're out for so long, so. Okay, I see. Yeah, you generally want to ledge hop bear, uh, and try to get out of the ledge as soon as you can for maximum invincibility. Right. So, um, so pretty much ledge hop fair instead of nair because of the invincibility thing. Uh, you because you're or... out longer for nair. And like okay, they could so, also they could also hold down too, which makes it worse of an option. So 
Are there ever scenarios to pick Nair instead of Fair then? Uh, most or of the time, Nair Nair's, just... Nair's actually pretty bad. Like, okay. if they ever hold down, then like it invalidates that move. So, I mean, if they're not holding down, then it's great. But uh, most couldn't of the time, they hold down good. against Fair too if they're at lower percents? Yeah. Uh, but if you do like a later version of Fair, uh, like you do as late of a Fair as possible, like you could shield afterwards before they could get a CC, or instead of because you have more leeway with fair you could also just hack stash or fastball back to ledge as if they if they were trying to like react and that's why i think fair is stronger because of the mix-ups you could do out of it i see so like if they try to like cc down smash but then you hack stash instead then you could punish them then mm. all right yeah i I don't. I'm, I don't really know how to hack stash very well. Yeah, I guess it, you yeah, don't have to hack like... stash. You could do okay. like a thing where you, you like double jump in, look, making it look like you'll fair, but then you fast fall back to ledge. Oh. Like you poke your head out and then fast fall back to ledge. I think that's just okay. as good. All right. No, don't let them do oh. that. When they do that, when by they, the way, when they for, go for... on the top platform, just attack them right what do you think you would attack like try to hit them on the top platform with like a full hop fair and air are you gonna try to hit him here or here probably the top platform yeah always go for the top platform because okay uh there's no way you could actually hit them there because you're too far away whereas like you could like react to like the south side b sound and then intercept there mm-hmm and if they don't make the side B sound, then you could like take space and like shark their landing. Cause if they if they don't side B and you go closer, they'll very likely double jump and then you could probably kill them there. Right. Cause you know, they don't want to land immediately against an invincible mark. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause going on stage is always pretty dangerous. Or or off stage against Mart yeah. or Falco. Not oh, man. I think sometimes like I'm not fully comfortable dealing with Falco's full hop, or not full hop per se, but specifically when he's like up there. Just because I feel like if I try to commit too hard with an aerial, I could just straight up die. Um, uh, well, uh, not die, but like get hit. So Sorry. what scenario are you referring to? Um, which one? I think... Like, I just kind of was waiting there. If you saw, like, when he was on the top platform, I didn't go to the top platform to try to hit him, even though... Well, maybe I should have. I'm not sure. But I was just like, okay, let me wait for you to okay. come back. Uh, and this stage in particular, you could always shark the top platform with a shore hop up air. Like, shore hop tipper up air will always reach here. And they can't do anything about it. So, first off, you could always shore hop up air, shark right there, if the file goes in the top platform. And oh, Yoshi geez. stories and both Fallon as well. Uh, secondly, I would suggest in Battlefield Dreamland, where you, you stay right out of range against, like, shield drop dare and also fair right as they drop down laser as well because like they could drop down aerial and laser like they could choose either one so i would stay right, right outside the range of dare and also and like fair at that spacing so then it could be both dare and laser so i would wait okay. a bit to see if they drop down and if they don't drop down after a couple seconds then uh you could full hop drift back away bear or fair okay uh, that's what I would suggest, but I saw something earlier that's, I, in my opinion, is a bigger issue. Okay. So remember when I said earlier that you want to limit Falco's laser game as much as you can? Yeah. Uh, why don't you look at the scenario again and maybe get a feel of what I'm talking about? Um, I think, uh... it, was, I think it was a couple of seconds before this. Yeah. Okay. So...
Percent. So why don't we look back at the seven minute mark and see if you could spot again what I'm talking about, about limiting Falco's laser game. Uh, here? Or? Let, let's, let's go from the seven minute mark to 640. And there's okay. like, there's not like just one specific scenario. It happened like multiple times. Okay. So. Calm down. Oh no, I fucked up. It's, Wait, it's yeah, way past um, that, but... Okay, so do you feel like you could have done certain things to limit Falco's laser game better in between those times? Uh, let me... Let between 7 minutes and 6.40. Let me take a look at an example of that. I guess... Okay, so... In that one in particular... I probably could have like done like always take laser dash back or or something because uh well the F smash wasn't a very good option at all basically uh and I was probably um wait let me see so got hit by laser I didn't do anything after that. So yeah, definitely sh should have done something after the take laser, oh, oh, or after getting hit by the laser. I should have planned well for that, pretty much. Okay, so let me ask you some questions of limiting Falco's laser. When you take laser dash back, or it's even sometimes take laser S smash, do you think you are limiting Falco's laser game? Dash back, no. Yeah, no. What about take laser S smash? Do you think that limits Falco's laser game? Probably not. I mean, it can, like, I guess at super close range, but let's keep in mind that S smash takes some time to get out, and also, it's only in front of Marth. Like, if Fal if you were, like, let's say, let's pretend you're, you're shielding the other way, so, like, your S smash is, like, here. If Falco is standing here, uh, your S smash doesn't cover anything. It doesn't limit his laser game in any meaningful way. Right. The only way that take laser S smash or backdash would ever actually work is if Falco limits himself. Funny enough. <laughs> like, they they would be like, oh, I have all this control. I'm just going to run in and get hit anyways. Like, So don't be conditioned by bad Falcos that purposely limit themselves that just runs in with an aerial. They're... They don't understand how much control they're exactly giving up right there. But... Oh. But... I feel like that's a very common yeah. thing Falcos do, though. They like to hit, hit you with the laser and then approach with an aerial to get an opening. You know, why don't... why do, you, you just solved 90% of Falcos. Congratulations. You don't, you don't need my lesson. <laughs> but uh, against the better Falcos... The better Falcos, that yeah, one, like, I guess actually... Like, like Jubby. Sure, Jubby. I guess Falcos, that would actually take their time and, like, actually mix up when they go in and, like, when they just, like, control space. You would, ha you would have to do a little more than that. Like, if right. they were to just repeatedly laser in place and you you're just standing here hoping that they will just come at you, that, that won't ever work because... Then uh, they're just repeatedly lasering. They will just see at some point you they will get some frame advantage and they would get a meaningful opening. But right, what can you do if they just repeatedly laser in place? Just just go in on them. How? Um, and let's well, say they are shooting okay. low lasers. Okay. You can't dash well, attack under it. Um, well, you could always do take laser dash forward. Okay. You could, something else is, um, well, depending what would you on do that dash forward. Um, I think eventually, like, you'll get to a point when you dash forward, 
that they won't that for them shooting a laser would be a bad option and then can but why would that be a bad option like what are you what are you presenting out of that dashboard to like make them regret shooting another less laser um i mean if you if you're close enough does it not work to just take the laser and then go in and hit them like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're telling me like the broad game plan, but like, why? Like, how would you hit him? Like, what move are you using to hit them? Uh, I guess examples that come to mind could be um, side B. Okay, yeah, that's fine. or maybe like take laser dash in and then use an aerial or something. You could also, I guess, something else that could work is field it and then wave dash out a shield jab. Okay. Or or shield it, and then if you're close enough, like, aerial out of shield. Or so you say you, shield you, into one of the something. options you just said is what I use all the time in this matchup. Uh, take laser dash forward side B. It's either that, that's my go-to, or dash back power shield. Since most of them also don't know how to deal with power shield, but if they know how to deal with power shield well, then I just take laser dash forward side B to make it that they don't want to shoot another laser necessarily. And then that creates a lot of mix-ups because then they're uncertain that like if I will they like with that take laser dash forward side B, that tells them that they cannot just laser freely again. And then they're pressured to either aerial in more or give up space. It's it's like it's like a huge mix up. And then mm. I'm like actually playing the game of them oh, yeah. as opposed to them. When you when you away. side B, do you only go for the first hit or do you like go for like the whole sequence? I try to go for tipper side B, so then they can't like I, I try to space it so then they can't hit me as easily. Uh because if you or, don't or like if you just... don't if you don't space it with your side B, then they could like CC shine you or something. Or not necessarily CC, but they could just shine you, right? So that's why yeah. you wanna space it. And if they like try to like jab you, you could hold down and grab them. Or if they try to do whatever, like they, you could like space a fair after. Because if you space a fair on Falco's shield, there's actually not very much Falco can do about it. That makes sense. Yeah. But so, like for for the side B, I meant like do you only go for like one hit of the side B. A or... lot of times I go for one hit, but you could actually okay. go for the side B combo if they're like above forty. I don't want to say. 30 okay. could work too. But yeah, if you if they're like cornered and they're like above 30, then yeah, I'll go for the side B combo because yeah. that knocks them off off stage and I could kill them. But most of the time, I'm just using it for positional advantage. Hmm. Okay. And I also I hold down like... in case they jab. Hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like I've never seen a lot of Marts use side B. I know you've talked about it, but I don't know if I've ever seen it happen myself. Um, I'm sure it's a good option. I just I'm not familiar with so it. So you remember when I said that a lot of Falcos just give up pressure? Like they give up their advantage they have with laser? Yeah. That that applies to top level as well. Like they I don't know. I, I don't feel like a lot of Falcos use their brain very well. And like, you know like there's I'm... a big reason why like there aren't very many top level Falcos, you know? And sure. like Mart's punish game on Falco is so, it's so, so demoralizing for the other Falco that <laughs> like you could honestly get away with playing this matchup improperly and still win because of your punish game. And like, right. not to mention that I think I like... Marth is actually really good at scrapping versus Falco for one reason and one reason alone. You could also light shield. Light shield, oh, like yeah, that's true. Light shield bag passes so much of Falco's pressure, and if you right. use that, like I need to use you that more. You win a lot more scraps than you really should, to be honest. Yeah, I need to use that more. I don't use light shield enough. Yeah, light, light shield, shield is, is actually very good. Yeah, light shield's broken. Uh, against Falco. Um, I mean, I feel like what you were saying about the punish game thing, I definitely think applies to like me versus Jubby. Like, yeah, even though he is like. A better player than I am. I am yeah, exactly. Like get away with like the punish game is so of the punish game, or just cheesing him at low percents because yeah. Falco gets gimped. Yeah, yeah. Like the punish game is so debilitating that like that alone takes Mart very far in this matchup, and it's it's 
And like the fact how Falco can't really sweet spot versus Mart's down tilt is so debilitating. And right. it's not until you fight the very top Falcos where they could like still beat you even though you like have a better Mango. punish game. Yeah, like Mango, but like if you were to also like keep your neutral game competitive, I think Mart wins pretty hard. Yeah. I think no but like like whenever I like watch Zane play against Mango, I feel like I've ne- I haven't seen him use he doesn't need to because to be. Mango doesn't know how to deal with Zane's power shields. Okay. So like, like if you notice, like he hits a lot of power shields, and most of the time when Mango gets hit, he's like, uh, 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 I'm, "I'm gonna shield afterwards," and that's that's what gives Zane the edge. Right. And actually, I, think... I really do wish Zane does take laser sight beam more often because, uh. Last year, I'm pretty sure actually Mango had a slight winning edge for three, and he just lets I don't know Mango run over him sometimes. Mm. And also, like what you, what gave Zane a huge edge was like you know the technology he brought to the table that Mango wasn't prepared to fight well with, like Light Shield. Light Shield was you know, dude. Light Shield gave Mango or not Mango Zane a lot more chances to gimp him and get free shield grabs. Yeah. Yeah. And right. now that doesn't work as often. Like, Mango just keeps on daring because Light Shield means you do have more sun. So, it's not until, like, Mango figure out some of his own answers, but I'm sure Zane will come up with something. Uh, I-, I know Zane's also more of a proponent of, like, Shield Wave Dash, which it's it's good. I don't like doing it because if I ever mess up doing a Shield la- Wave Dash, then I'm stuck in Shield. But. I, I wouldn't be opposed if you doing like shield wave dash if you time it well. Okay. All right. Um... And also, this is just my take. It's my perspective as well. Um, I'm I'm sure other people have different opinions, but my take is to use dash forward side B to like create pressure and have the Falco more. Since I'm limiting Falco's laser game, that's when I could take the pace in the matchup. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yes, I do okay. make shield wave dash out shield, but I'm breaking my rules. Anyways, right. you have any other questions? Um, I think we talked about the main things. So yeah, like take to summarize, it's like I should consider take laser dashboard side B. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, yeah, I really do you think like. Mm-hmm. Do you think like? But you think that shield wave dash out of shield is also fine? I I think if you are good with the execution, then yes, it's fine. But if you find yourself like spot dodging, rolling from trying to execute it, I would say abandon it immediately. Okay. Because uh, spot dodging and rolling is really bad. No, I I, I think so too. But it's also something to just practice as well. Yeah. Probably. You do suffer less stun out of shield, but. I guess yeah, I, I it's it's not wrong I guess to use shield wave dash. And also um I mean actually no just in general I feel like it's pretty hard to act immediately out of hits done from lasers and from sh- from uh, like shield stun. But maybe that's uh just... that's just you needing to practice it more. Okay. And like... maybe you're not used to the sun because you are acting earlier out of shield dead as opposed to taking laser. Okay. Okay. And um, by the way, what I really wanted to point out was certain actions. Uh, let me clear this. Uh, okay. Well, first off, you could have light shield if you were to light shield here. Uh, oh, actually, no. Never mind. He crossed you up. If he crosses you up and you light shield, you're kind of screwed regardless. But uh, you, this is a very common scenario where if they cross up your shield, you actually just want to hold shield because they oh, will really? do this a lot. Yeah, they would cross you up and then they'll run and dare. Because it beats both like jumping out of shield and also roll in. So you just want to hold shield there. And then like you could probably get shield grab then. So you want to make this a mix up where you just hold shield if they cross you up. So that makes sense. I think there's this one other player that like this one other Falco who was like getting, hitting me with a lot of F smashes after a dare. And I was, I could, I didn't understand why at first, but then I realized. It might have been because I wasn't holding shield, and I tried acting on a shield like all the time, and I just get hit by it. 
Yeah, you want to hold then, shield longer than normal against Falco yeah. since his grab game is bad. So, but then once I like figured that out, like I wasn't lo really losing to him as much anymore. Yeah. And, uh, like I, I was actually winning most of the games okay. because I kind of realized, okay, I should maybe hold shield a little more, especially against worse Falcos. Yeah, yeah. Um, here, it, it's when Falco is doing approaching lasers. Take, like just standing there jab will stuff them out yeah. so here's an example of what i mean okay. like if you were to jab here his laser wouldn't come yeah. out and then you have to frame Ugh. sorry my mom's vacuuming vacuuming the room right now just one second actually let me mute myself here. yeah mute, mute your mic really quick but once you get the jab on falco that creates a pretty good advantage where especially if you tip the jab you could like jump Nair in place or hold down grab if they try to jab you. Uh, both of them are very good and create and would break free of um, Falco's laser control. So uh, let me know if you heard that. Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to point out another scenario where you could have locked him down. Yeah, instead of, instead of an S smash here, since S smash comes out later. You could have side B here. If you side B, then that would have prevented Falco from laser controlling you here. So that's one. And I believe there's one more. No, that was it. But yeah, those were the three scenarios where you could have locked down Falco's laser control better. Um, let me know when you're free to talk again. Okay, we're good. All right. Yeah. Anyway, so, so you said that for the just to clear, double check for the jab when you said I could like CC the jab, right? Yeah. You always want to hold down when you're doing jab or side B in case they like try to jab you, and then okay. it's a free grab. Yeah. Hold down. All right. Yeah, I just I screwed that one up so bad. Holy moly. That's alright. Side B is OP. Slippy slowing down now. Do you Ever think it's fine to challenge glider dashes? Uh, I yeah. If you if you are okay, I'm gonna guess it's yeah. First off, you didn't actually do a good ledge dash. I'm pretty sure you could have. Yeah, it was kind of late, but I wouldn't suggest challenging it at that spacing. I think you should stand around, back here up a little bit, and yeah. then like near in place since Falco doesn't move fast out of his ledge dash. Yeah, so, so if you were to like bit. stand here and then like narrow in place, I think it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I I guess yeah, I was definitely like too close. Yeah. Oh man, I can't shield drop. I'm so bad at that. It's alright. And that was just a timing issue. I uh, don't know. I think he actually got this, uh, the sweet spot angle. Oh, he did? Like, you want to recognize... Yeah, here... Actually... I, I, I'm actually not 100% sure if that's a true sweet spot, but when they are, like, roughly around... If they're, like, roughly around here, like, a little lower, I would always grab the ledge here. Just to okay. cover options. Because like they can actually angle right below your down tilt. So just be aware of that. I see. And with Fox, I didn't know that's that. he, with Fox, he could sweet spot more yeah. consistently. So keep in mind. Both his side okay, B and did... his up B. I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't I know how believe, I got I that one. That worked. <laughs> yeah, honestly, me neither. You can ops attack, by oh, the way. You right. can always ops attack down smash. 
Just, I'm just DI down away and you will never die by this yeah. I'm just not that great at it. Also, um, I think one time I did get an on attack and then he he just beat it by like F smashing me right after. Uh you probably How do you get around that? You probably off attack is S smash? Like did you, wait, did you off attack is down smash or is S smash? I think first actually wait, I'm trying to remember. Because that, like that, a... that heavily depends. Sometimes off attacking is a gimmick. I think one time he like did because like he first he mark killered. Mm-hmm. And then I land on stage, then he did a bear. Oh, yeah, that, and that's a gimmick. Don't, and... That's like you don't want to ops attack if they're actionable immediately afterwards. Okay. With down smash, Falco's in a little bit of lag, and you will always want to ops attack there. Okay, so I think it's possible like... that he could dash down smash again, but it's such a tight timing that you could actually ops attack that again, too. So, uh, you always want to ops attack down smash. It's a point that makes sense. I mean, I think. I've been able to hit it a few times, just sometimes. Yeah. Make Falco like, work harder, it. as if yeah. he didn't need I just thought harder. that I just thought that if I DI'd up, I also would have been able to survive it, but uh, clearly I was wrong here. Y- you, Cause... like, why why risk trying to edge guard or not not edge guard recover when you could have just grabbed ledge immediately from down smash? I guess the other risk is that if I messed up Dom Detect, I would have died too. So practice it. Sure, yeah. Yeah. It's always it, to do an Ops Tech, DI down away and input attack. And with also C Sick down. Yeah. Wait, um, for. Although there are some moves where you don't have to C Stick down, right? You always have to C Stick down. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I feel like I've gone away with. Some on detects without using C stick. Uh, there are there's the probably mode. exceptions, but you always want like, to C stick. Like I think because of the angle of down smash, I didn't have to C stick one time. Maybe you held down, and because of the ASCI down, that worked. Yeah. No, I used I hit down on the gray stick for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably the reason why because C stick down is ASCI down, and right. if you're doing the same thing with the control stick, then sure. But to get so optimal is... results, you want to DI down in a way. Yeah, makes sense. So, and also, just to make sure, was there any way I could have made that back, or was I... Probably, actually. Um, you The reason why you didn't make it back is because you already burned your double jump. If you oh. can, like... Because Mardavile double jump is pretty bad at recovering if he's far away. So you want to try to save your double jump if you can. Okay, so I would have just had to save the double jump and then make yeah, sure. Yeah, so right. like if if say like you side B instead there. Like you side B, you probably would have recovered a lot lower, but at least you have your double jump mix up down there, like as a timing mix up. Okay. So that's what you could have done. So I guess that's one thing when it comes to recovery I'm still like uncertain about. When is it okay to use a double jump earlier and when is it not okay? Because I I've seen like players like they'll use it earlier and sometimes sometimes they will save it and like I don't uh, really that understand really depends. like the differences on the scenarios. Yeah, uh, like you said yourself, it really does depend on the scenario. Like sometimes I like double jumping above them when there's no way they could like double jump bear me. Um, I like using it most as a mix up to double jump the ledge. Uh, it really depends. You gotta point out the scenario if you want better answers. Okay, but in this one specifically, it would have been better to not use it early. Yeah, and also if you're like super far away, then yeah, sure, double jump. But you weren't that far away. And I think the reason why you might have double jumped earlier is because you saw yourself in the blast zone. So you're like, oh, I have to double jump. But actually, Fountain's camera kind of tricks you. Because the blast zone is actually way further than like the uh, magnifying glass. So do keep that in mind, Fountain. Okay. You're actually a lot closer than you think. Okay. Oh man, if you. Hmm. Nothing. Was it something about that edge guard or? Yeah, like here, or like it. If you were to wait, and if you smash them off. Like, you would have killed him because he didn't have a double jump at that point. But whatever. I wasn't sure if I was, why I was thinking with the fair. I think I'm, I might have just been trying to go for something 
new or or something like because like that was something i've like haven't done before that much it might play this game like you like if, if you want to know why like all the top bot players could get away with like they win against falcos well just look at this match yourself like I pointed out so many wrong things, and yet it's still last talk because this matchup is so unforgiving for Falco. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't actually have to learn neutral until like at a very high level. That okay, you might get punished a little bit, but dude, the punish game, dude, the punish game. All it took was like this. <laughs> Just one counter. Yeah, one counter, dude. You probably could kill him too. Oh. You did, you did kill him. <laughs> See, that's why that's why Marts don't need to learn neutral in, in this matchup because the punish game is that debilitating. But I want to learn neutral. Yeah, yeah, it's good long term to learn neutral. But yeah, that that I hope that answers I, your question as to why top Marts don't need to implement a better neutral. <laughs> I mean, from what I heard, Zane was like, yeah, until I reached top twenty, my game plan was just dash back grab. That's yeah, exactly. Neat. You just need a bit. Good punish game, and that's it. <laughs> so if you want to break past tw top 20, then yeah, you do need to learn neutral. But like, yeah, all you need against Falco, and to a lesser extent Fox, you do need a better punish game. But like, all and you need is just like a, a lot good of punish characters games. in yeah. general, right? Yeah, and that too. Um, he, and Zane's probably being a little bit hyperbolic about that. Like, he probably did have like a better neutral than just dash back, but. You know, just just gimp him a couple times and you're there, really. Like, I... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not to say, though, that, like, even though what I am describing, that, like, Mark does have a debilitating punish game against Falco, that, that doesn't mean that the Falcos are cleared either. Like, they're also very dumb. <laughs> like, they don't know... They don't... They have such an enormous privilege with their neutral game that, like, they don't even, like, take a second to even think about using it. So... <laughs> The, the right. fall is also on them too. So like, if they're like also really mad about getting gimped and all, just like, just know that they're really stupid too. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a big part of being able to win this matchup is your ability to cheese Falco low percent mm, as Marth. Well, it's not I, I, I hope. Thing, obviously. Yeah. Well, so, but like, I got him. A, I got Jovi a few times here. Yeah. Like. And that will work against better... against worse Falcos, but you better hope to not play Falcos that know the answers to cheese. I feel so. like Jubby's a good player though. Jubby, he, even... he's he's all right, but he's not like he's not like NorCal PR. He's he was probably one of the favorites to win the Arcadian this time if it didn't get canceled due to COVID. Oh, from what I heard. Oh yeah, maybe yeah. He sounds like a good candidate. Um, yeah. Uh. Do you want to? But review... he's still better than. He's before still before we di before we digress, uh, do you want to review another game or do you feel like we're done? I'd like to go over another one. Sure, sure. Yeah, we could focus more on recovery since we didn't really go over that very much. Okay, that that's what I'm talking really about. Stupid, right? What <laughs> I I like just saw it. I'm like, wait, what the hell was I thinking? Why did I dash back after that job? That was idiot. Dude, oh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. See how much he scared you, he... dude. He got I jabbed. He's just... like, oh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I, I, I should have just been way more aggressive after that job. Yeah, that's that's the point. Like, once you limit Falco's lasers, he feels less of a character, and you could just, you could pounce really hard. So there was no need to dash back there, especially when you get a tipper jab. They are they're spooked. So yeah, you you got it, except you really didn't. But you know the concept. Well, I I realized it after the fact. Like, yeah. From watching it. Yeah, yeah, it becomes a At lot least... more obvious. I guess now I know. Yeah, now you know. But yeah, wait, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, keep in mind the game plan. You want to limit Falco's lasers. Yeah. Oh my can. goodness. That was actually so bad. Yeah. Yeah, you gave up a free you gave up like the easiest. I, I probably could have gimped him right there. 
You really could have. You really could have. Because he like just dashed on the way back, and I could have just run up, grabbed or down to him or something. Yeah, you could you could fair him. Like if you control space with fair after that, like he had very little options. Honestly, I feel like I don't really know how to use fair as well on this matchup. I guess uh, at least for this matchup, if you space of rising, like say Falco shields, and you, you like this is like his shield length, and if you were to space a rising fair here, like. There's very little Falco could do about it. <clears throat> okay. Just uh, just for your information. But yeah, you yeah. can also like run up Nair in place as well, and it would be just as good if they don't shield. Right. Yeah, actually, I would just encourage you to run up Nair, because that works more often than it should. I feel like there I didn't have a double jump, but I'm still landed, so it's not the worst, I guess. Okay, okay yeah. That, that... What do you think you could have done? I think what I want. So what I could have done was probably fastball a little more, side B or something. At what one point? Option. At what point? Like below the stage. So like. So can you can you rewind yourself and? Tell me where exactly you would side B. Yeah, just let, let's get there first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, instead of double jumping there, could have gone down a little more and then done a side B and then double jump. But then uh... I guess I would have to do something depending on how he responds to all, all of that. I actually would not encourage that very much. Okay. Because he already grabbed ledge, and if he were to wait, and just waited out your side B, he could go for the easiest bear in the world. So I would not recommend side being right in front of his face. If you were to recover right. low than side B, then that's no, a little bit better. But that's what I was thinking of. Like fastball below this like below him. And then to the point where it would be risky for him to just Well, you down said that you would side B right as you double jump. Oh no, that's not what I meant. Okay. I okay. Think what I meant to say was like instead of double jumping, go down, like fastball down below this. It's kind of hard because we can't see below the stage right now. So okay. This is, but like I was thinking, like okay, below this fastball below the stage, and then side B double jump or something in that order. Yeah. What I would have actually done here is I would have just spaced a better double jump to the ledge because <clears> yeah, <throat> this bear <throat> punishes bad sweet spot, like. Okay. You were really far above the ledge here. I think I like, might have been trying to... This is not a sweet spot double jump. Yeah. So, like, if you were to double jump down here, that bear would never hit you. Okay. Just letting you know that. So, pretty much, like, bad double jump could have... Bad double jump probably could have just done it a little later yeah okay i might have gone you're him cutting with off that a bit at another point in this i'm not sure oh shoot, shoot. okay i can hear you now but you're i think your internet okay. is being off but oh i was saying i think i might have gotten him with that lower double jump at another point in this set i'm not sure though but, uh, yeah, so let's, let's focus on auto recoveries. Yeah, let's let's continue. Then. I think another option that's like good that I don't use enough is like if I'm like in midair, just taking laser, taking the laser, and then doing a fair after. Yeah, you should you should default to doing that. Uh, just like react. Yeah, I'm just not great at executing it. Yeah, you should practice I that think. in the Uncle Punch event where. Yeah. You shore up and then take laser fair. I'm just speeding things up a little. Okay. Since uh Oh no no, no. Yeah. that was probably a sequence worth looking at. Yeah, he outplayed you there. Okay, so, so I just got called out pretty much. But right? but the he outplayed you only after you like willingly burned some resources. Like I Instead of double jumping there, I probably would have side B there instead, which isn't the greatest, but if I had to choose, 
I would rather burn my side B rather than my double jump. But uh Okay. But he could have double jump bared you, but so I don't think that was even a good option there. But he he just then predicted that you were gonna sweet spot up B, which you couldn't mix that up by like doing a higher up B and landing on stage. But what made this happen in the first place is that you just dropped it low for like oh. like I don't think you needed to drop low here. Like what you could have done is this. If you're like afraid that like he was gonna like hit you, you could have you could have double jumped earlier and air dodge on stage. Ah. Yeah, so that's like a mix up to keep in mind instead of like dealing with I, this. I I use it sometimes. I just yeah, you don't want to use it all the time, but like just keep that in mind. But pretty much that time, he just got a good read on my recovery, then, right? Yeah, yeah. He like predicted that you would one burn your resources and two sweet spot the ledge. So those like two different scenarios that you could have recovered. But pretty much, he did just. It did get red pretty hard then. Yeah. Okay, uh, how did this happen? Oh, yeah. When you side B really close, like, first off, you double jump. That 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 was definitely a really bad double jump since you were really high up, so there's no reason to double jump there. But okay, also, so secondly... In general, don't double jump when you're, like, higher then, right? Yeah, there's, like, think about it. What's the point? That's true. Like, the whole point of double jump is so then, like, you could, like, reach to the stage at least but since you already can reach to the stage like that's just super redundant and you're giving up one of your recovery tools and there because you've been side being and you're side being close to his range that's like a very easy gimp or not gimp but just an edge guard that is like automatic for them so and set like when you side b yeah right when you're within their like going out their range since he he's giving a cue that he's going to go out there nair, you don't want to side B again. You want to... you Instead of side being, you want to fair. Okay. And those are two things you could have done. So, All I right. think this is a good stopping point. And uh, let me give you some notes. All right, so one... Uh, I could do a display capture. So, one, don't, so limit Falco's laser game by presenting a dash forward side B. This is so then you're giving him a reason to approach and also not letting them laser, free, laser you freely. So, right. there's that. Two, uh... Don't burn double jump needlessly. Sweet spot better. And don't side be right in right in front of their face. Uh three. What was our third point? You know what else we talked about? Um I guess the one thing is like if I do pressure or like stuff them when they laser, just be more aggressive. Yeah. Okay. Sure. When you do, when you stuff out their laser, press on the advantage. Was there any other major points we talked about? Because I feel like we talked most of it about limiting Falco's laser game. And that's like really the crux of how you play neutral in this matchup. Yeah. I think that's the main thing we talked about. Okay. Uh, you have any other questions? I think I'm good. Alright. Well, hope to see you around then. Okay. Cool.